please go ahead and raise your hand and we will bring the mic over to you. Good afternoon. First, first question will be third row on your right here, uh, Tim Priester, or on your left. Coach, how are you? Good. How are you? Very, very good. Thank you. Um, I, I'm going to ask you about your second round draft pick, your third round draft pick, and your fourth round draft pick, and I'm sure you're going to deflect the praise to them. But if you played a role in their development, what specific things did you do to help them? Um, <clears throat> all three of them are, are really uh, unique uh, cases, unique individuals. Um, you know, like you said, I mean, they they are extremely hard workers, and they had a lot of natural talent. I think. Um, the, the biggest place that I attempted to help them was in just in the fundamentals, right? And we talk about it all the time, right? We praise fundamentals and we praise effort because those are the two things that um, I, I believe that travel to any level, right? Whether that's Pop Warner, high school, college, professional. And, um, you know, all three of those guys were, were very unique in that none of them really played true wide receiver in high school. So there was a lot of things that they had to learn. Um, but there were also a lot of things that they did naturally. And so, um, you know, just meshing those things together was probably the biggest impact, I think, uh, that I was able to have on them. And, and moving forward as the, the receivers coach at Notre Dame, um, I mean, what, what do you hope earmarks your time as, as the instructor of Notre Dame's wide receivers? It, to me, it's just about consistently and, and um, constantly getting better, right? And as you watch a group, as you watch a group of, of young men and you watch where they start, um, whether that's from the beginning of a year to the end of, it, of the year or from the beginning of their careers to the end of their careers, um, is there improvement? Is there constant improvement? Um, and that goes into recruiting. That goes into, obviously, the development of each of those guys um, and just, uh, uh, just helping them just to become the best players and young men that they can become. Next question will be from Eric Hansen, front row, far right. Hey, Coach. Um, I wondered if you could share your uh, impressions of the talent level that you're inheriting in the wide receiver room. And also, as you're in these bowl practices, are you, because this is a full hand Notre Dame hasn't had for a while, are you trying to move people around to slot boundary field or just kind of leave things where they were? Well, just kind of leaving it where they were just for, you know, they, they've been doing certain positions all year long and they've learned things. And so we want to, you know, as Coach said, we want to put these guys in positions to be successful, you know, come game day. Um, for me, you know, I, I've only seen them a couple practices, right, and I've watched a little bit of film and things like that. But I try to come in just with a, with a clean slate and open mind um, as I work with them, you know, because the things that I'm teaching may be different from what they've learned. You know, that doesn't make them right, doesn't make them wrong. But when they're hearing things that are different, it's going to take some time for them to adjust to it. And, um, you know, and then, you know, we'll start there. And then just as I said, we want to watch them continue to grow. I think there is some talent in the room. And I think that those guys are, there's a lot of young, uh, a lot of youth in there. And um, so I'm excited to watch them grow. I'm excited to, to watch them learn. And, you know, they're all great young men and they're all really, really hungry and eager to learn. So. And then my follow up question is I would imagine the dynamic. Next year is going to be much different, but in terms of this bowl game only, are you trying to have your hand in who's playing, who's not in the game, you know, and how much, and also giving ideas and offensive meetings about things? Yeah, so we've we've uh, began some game planning and things like that, and um, you know, a lot of the plays that are run here are plays that I'm familiar with, and so I may not know the terminology. Um, you know, I've, I've had the uh, I've been fortunate to work with Coach Gino Gaduli for some time at Cincinnati. So sometimes you'll have to translate some things for me. But um, so I'll do a little bit of my input that way. And, then, um, you know, just teaching things, you know, the way that I know them, um, obviously, after running it through with with Coach Parker and and the rest of the staff. And so it's going to be it's going to be a team effort. You know, you talk about rotation, you talk about who's going to be where. I mean, you know, they have a much better feel for, for the group uh, right now than I do. And so uh, I'm going to lean on that. I'm going to rely on that. I'm going to trust that. And then, uh, you know, we'll just, we'll just grow from there. Back here by the camera is uh, Levon Whitaker. Hey, Coach, I was going to ask about the, you know, what impressed you about Notre Dame receivers room. But as a backup question here, what, in the short time that you've been here, what has it been like building a relationship with these guys? What have you seen in the personalities and who have you kind of connected with on and off the field in such a short amount of time? 
Well, you know, I've been on the road a bunch, so I haven't had nearly um, enough time to really connect with them as much as I would like to. Obviously, that's going to be a point of emphasis of mine just over these next couple of weeks is getting to know them, getting to know what, what gets them going and getting, getting, getting them to uh, make some click and things like that. And, um, but I think the, mo- the thing I've, uh, which I kind of just mentioned, but uh, the thing that I've been mostly uh, impressed about is just their work ethic, number one, and their eagerness to learn, right? And, you know, we're in meetings, you know, I'm talking and everybody's just locked in, you know, and they're hungry and they're eager to learn. And um, obviously they're re- really, really smart young men. And so it makes it exciting to work with, with guys like that. And they're all happy, they're all eager, and then they all root for each other. And so, um, you know, I haven't felt the selfishness, if there is any. And so, uh, you know, we'll continue to preach that. And I know Coach Free does a great job of preaching, you know, being selfless. And uh, so I'm just excited, man, excited to get to work with them and, you know, just honored to be here. Third row on your right, Tim O'Malley. Coach, this is more about 2024 in the future than the Sun Bowl. What You should have 10 wide receivers after signing day heading into 2024, assuming nothing else happens. Is that the healthy number? You kind of looked at at other stops that you want to target, 10-11, and it's kind of a follow-up to that. Where are you comfortable playing in terms of getting guys ready? If they're all ready to play in a game, that's still that's probably too many to play in a game. What's kind of a comfortable rotation for you in, on a game day? Well, I mean, it'd be nice, you know, to – It'd be a good problem to have if you did have 10 that you felt like were ready, right? And, um, you know, I I think a lot of it depends on the offense, right? Like if there are predominantly, you know, three receivers on the field at a time, for instance, then you'd love to have at least six guys you feel like, you know, really good about at least being too deep at each of those positions. And um, obviously if there's a a big uh, difference between the first guy and the second guy, then the, the, the numbers or the amount of play should reflect that. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question there. And then in terms of like 10 for a program, is, is that yeah. kind of the healthy number you've seen? That it just asked because Notre Dame for the last couple of years has been short going into its seasons and then injuries hit. Is, does 10 seem like a logical one? I know you want more, but there's other yeah. positions that need players. Yeah, obviously that's up to the, the head coach uh, first and foremost. But from um, anywhere, I've been a part of anywhere from 10 to 12, you know what I mean? And most places it's been more 11 has kind of been the goal. Um, you know, but, you know, yeah, I would love to have 12 guys, you know, but, um, you know, 10, I, I don't think you, you feel too short, um, especially, you know, with the, uh, you know, the amount of great tight ends that we've had here, you know, that kind of takes some stress off of you as well. And so, you know, different offenses ca- call for different things. And so I think, you know, 10, 11, somewhere in there is probably a, a fitting number for here. Final question for Coach Mike Brown from Mike Berardino, second row on your left. Hey, Mike. How you doing? Um, so it's the second straight year where, where Marcus reached back to his Cincinnati guys to uh, they were at Wisconsin, and Luke Fickle, obviously, important in all your lives. What was it like, that conversation? Was it the fact that, you know, you are giving up part of your title at Wisconsin was passing game coordinator too? Was there was, – how helpful was that familiarity, the, the group that you'd all worked together before, including Coach Fickle? Um, how did that work? Because maybe in some situations they would have tried to block that. Yeah, I think um, – you know, it was a really tough uh, conversation. It was a cu- tough decision, you know, especially just uh, having just gotten there and, you know, building relationships and getting to know the, the kids in the room. Um, obviously, I had worked for Coach Fickle for five years and uh, very grateful for that and um, very appreciative, you know, of him taking a chance on me. And, um, you know, I, I was in a great place. I was, you know, I had a great job um, and all those things. And I think there there was probably – one person in the entire country that could have picked up the phone to call me and I would have, at the very least been interested in, and that's Coach Freeman. And so, uh, you know, just <clears throat> my experience with him at Cincinnati and just, you know, obviously he was the defensive coordinator there. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, just watching him on a daily basis and how he carried himself, how he addressed the team when he had the opportunity to address the team, how he addressed his defense, um, the professionalism, the energy, the relationships that he built with those guys is something that uh, I have always admired about him and, um, you know, always wanted to kind of model my coaching um, after. And, um, you know, to have the opportunity to to work for a person like that, man, it's, it doesn't come by very, very often. And then obviously to do it at a place like this, uh, you know, it was, it was a no-brainer for me. So very thankful, very grateful, and honored to be here. And the follow-up would be, um, you know, in the portal, before you got here, four of the skill position guys, one of them was a tight end, kind of exited from warm weather places. And, and I know, you know, that apparently there'll be some, some more warm weather guys coming in. Is you, You've worked with mid, Midwestern mentality, had to teach that, I guess, at uh, several spots now for receivers. 
is there a way to bring the, the guys who are used to being 80 and sunny and teaching them to, to be reliable receivers when it's, you know, pretty ugly out? I think it's a fair question. You know, I, um, I think that it all boils down to the culture that you build. And I think that kids will adapt to that culture, right? And it's our job as coaches to help them. Uh, to adapt to that culture, right? So it could be a, a kid from actually from the Midwest. It may not have as much to do with weather at all, but now it's just more of, hey, this program is run differently than the programs that I'm used to, right? And um, us helping it, helping them recognize that and giving them the tools to be able to succeed in those cultures, um, I think is what's important. And I think, uh, you know, if you have a room that has some good leadership and you get some good leaders in there and they can bring the young guys along because, you know, the best Pressure is peer, peer pressure, right? And so showing them the ropes and, and um, you know, showing them the way that they're supposed to do things, taking care of their bodies and, you know, all the little things that go into their success, I think it helps you and I think it helps build a culture and I think it, um, you know, builds some continuity um, throughout programs. Obviously, the, the landscape of college football is obviously a lot different now, so it's becoming a much bigger part of it. But um, I think you do the best that you can to educate guys and then push the culture in the direction that you want it to be built. All right. Thank you very much, Coach. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.